Okay, my name is Bram Doorgang. I'm an R&D engineer at the Netherlands Aerospace Center. Um, I have a yeah, background in mechanical engineering from the University of Trenthe. After that, I worked some two years in the automotive industry, uh, modeling crash test dummies to improve crashworthiness of cars. So, so a nice presentation about an electric car, also interesting. After that, since 2006, I worked for the Netherlands Aerospace Center. I always wanted to do something with uh, aircraft or to be a pilot, but okay, bad eyes, but also nice to do uh, calculations over there. Not my slide, but okay. Here starts. Okay, um, yeah, since 16 years working at LR, doing all kinds of uh, FEM simulations, uh, static, buckling analysis, um, uh, vibrations, fatigue analysis, thermal, all kinds of analysis, with all kinds of pre uh, and post processors. Uh, FEM. No. Uh, for our uh, project, where, which I'm going to present, uh, I used uh, Digimat uh, virtual allowables. Uh, very uh, effective to use uh, to, to model uh, composites uh, coupons. So I will talk about that. And especially about uh, the effect of uh, fiber waveness. Uh, okay. First, start with an overview of my presentation. I will start with an uh, overview of my company. Uh, for those who are not familiar with the uh, Netherlands Aerospace Center. Then I uh, give some background of the effect of defect study that I did with uh, DigiMat uh, VA. Um, I'll show a slide what is the importance of fiber waveness. Um, if you have that in your product, yeah, then uh, the strength of the stiffness can decrease uh, quite a bit. If, I'll show you later. Um, then I did, uh, I was looking for uh, Sample to test, to cut some uh, coupons from, and uh, do some physical testing and compare it with uh, virtual testing. So I found within NLR some product that uh, might have uh, fiber waveness. Um, to prove that it has indeed fiber waveness, I made a C scan, and we'll talk about that. And uh, for the simulations, I also need um, like uh, certain parameters for waveness like uh, wavelength and amplitude. Uh, so I base that on a certain type of inspection by microscope inspection, I'll show you later. Um, then I'll talk about the test setup and the test plan that I had for the virtual physical testing and I will show you uh, uh, some, some results of two kinds of coupons without and uh, with fiber waveness and end with some conclusions and recommendations for future work. Uh, about NLR, um, existing more than 100 years, and we have two uh, offices, uh, main office in Amsterdam, you see uh, picture left on the top, and I work in Marnesse, it's the building on the right. There you have, uh, for example, many testing facilities, like uh, we have a drone center uh, to test drones, we have the German Dutch wind tunnels nearby for wind tunnel testing. We have a test department for physical testing who I work with for my study to test the coupons, but also for physical testing. So all kinds of facilities. Um, core business of NLR is, uh, of course, aerospace. Um, we do research on aircraft helicopters, but also sometimes for cars we do research to make a new composite part or for trains. More than 600 employees, roughly 50-50% Amsterdam and Mark Nissen. Um, yeah, we clients all over the world. Uh, we work for uh, European projects, we work for uh, Dutch defense. Okay, that's what's NLAR. Then uh, go to the subject of my study that I did. Um, so, um, I did this effect of defect study for uh, a national funded project called Circular Airspace, Product Innovation in Airspace Industry, and uh, that ran from 2019 to 21. And we wanted to build up some uh, more uh, low tier uh, knowledge on um, virtual testing, and I mainly focused on the coupon level. 
And um, I wanted to predict accurately the strength of stiffness. Well, compulsors can be a challenge always to predict that right. But uh, if you take into account um, a defect like fiber weakness, uh, it's even more uh, challenging to get it right. In the left bottom, you see a picture from literature uh, with some outplane waveness. That means you have the waveness or undulation through the thickness of the composite. You can also have it in plane, but I focus on outplane waveness. And yeah, at also at NLR, we, I saw some parts that had uh, waveness, so it can be important, but also for customers. Sometimes they experience um, waveness and then they ask, yeah, what to do with it? Yeah, can you still use it? If you scrap it, yeah, it's a lot. A lot of waste of time and money. So if you can say something about it with simulation, that's an advantage. Um, first, I looked in literature. Um, some other persons that uh, did also uh, work on this. And uh, uh, in the left graph, you see some uh, the compressive strength uh, of uh, unmatched coupons of a carbon epoxy uh, composite. And uh, you see on the left bar is a pristine uh, coupon. It's more than 600 megapascal compressive strength. But if you have a, like a 5.6 degrees uh, fiber waveness angle, that's the angle with the horizontal plies, let's say, and picture on the right, then it drops like well, more than uh, 100 megapascals. So, so you see, that also depends on the amplitude, of course, but it's a uh, large degree. So, uh, Strength and also stiffness, not sure here. Um, yeah, these coupons were um, intentionally the fiber waveness was created up uh, artificially, but in a, a product for an aircraft, uh, yeah, uh, it can be caused, for example, by yeah, uneven fuel pressure, or you have rust and shrinkage, or you have pipe buckling. So that can be the causes. Um, for this study, I yeah, went looking uh, inside NLR, do we have products with fiber waveness that I can use, or should I make a plate uh, with waveness artificially? So, at the end, I found a plate you see on the left. A uh, composite plate was used uh, for another project, um, also to cut coupons from, but um, this was also used to use um, to test a new. Uh, Silicon uh, rubber material for a vacuum bag for the composite manufacturing process, and that was pressed into the plate. So you see on the left and uh, on the right top where the silicon material was pressed into the plate. So we sp suspected that there was um, out of plate fiber weakness. But yeah, from the outside, you cannot see any inside. So we, we made a C scan, you see the uh, image on the right, you can see. Where you see the two areas where the, where the fiber waveness is, but not the amount of fiber waveness. You could not see it yet. Um, for this, we put an other transducer, ultrasonic transducer, uh, used uh, higher uh, resolution, not 5 megahertz, but 10, 10 megahertz. And then in those two areas of the plate, you can see the B scans on the left and on the bottom of each uh, area. You can see the fiber waveness. Also, I have a part of the plate with me, so maybe after the presentations, for those who are interested, you can see the plate and uh, the coupons. So, from this, uh, I can see oh wow, that's fiber waveness. And based on this, I uh, decided where to cut the coupons that I wanted to test uh, fiber waveness. And also, some coupons without waveness I tested. So then a new order to cut from the plate. If it goes to the next. Um, <clears throat> in the left picture, you see the coupon, unmatched compression coupons that I cut from the plate, and also some small specimens um, that I may use for uh, light microscope uh, research. On the right bottom, you see one of those um, images made by the microscope, and you see clearly. Uh, the out of plane fiber waveness and the most gray areas are the zero degrees plus and the other fibers are coming to the zero point 45 degrees direction. So, in total, I had 20 coupons. I also did some uh, testing with some spare specimens to, to determine uh, the fiber and uh, the uh, composite density. 
in a fiber volume fraction, and that I can use in uh, GGMELT uh, as an input parameter. Here you see a uh, photo on the left top, the test machine that I use. Uh, um, this is from a test department uh, where you can do coupon test. Um, uh, first, I made a yeah, sort of a plan and simulation before physical testing. So I made sure uh, with some analytical calculation that the coupon would not uh, buckle. Um, also, did some uh, estimations of uh, what I could expect from uh, the, for the compression uh, strength of those coupons by analytical methods. Maybe they, these are a bit less accurate. And also with Digimount, I made a first simulation using a uh, standard uh, theory model available in uh, Digimount. And it's also nice in Digimount that you all already have a, a large uh, geo qualification uh, geo database. And Luckily for this material that I tested, it was already available in uh, Teachmount. So I can use that, so I didn't have to uh, uh, test a lot of um, coupons to determine why properties or these kinds of parameters. Performed uh, with all these uh, 20 coupons, um, I determined the compressive strength and also the compressive modulus. Um, I used the extensometer to uh, measure the, the bench. Uh, Compression, displacement, and also I use the video uh, non-contact uh, non-contact video extensometer to capture the failure mode, but also measure the strains on the side of the special machine at uh, the back uh, uh, two cameras. And after the physical testing, uh, I did some validation to compare the Digimat V V A and virtual test results with physical test data. And for this, uh, I not only used Digimont as a post-processor, but also a Mark Method to extract, um, for example, um, the strain at the strain gauge locations. Because I instrumented the coupons, and you see on the bottom left, without waveness, had back-to-back -back strain gauges, and with waveness, uh, had one strain gauge on the flat side. <coughs> um, you see some first. Um, the first results of the coupon uh, cut from a 90 degrees angle from the plate, um, 16 plies um, without waveness, and uh, the first you put in uh, mark the dimensions of the coupon based on uh, yeah. uh, measurements that we did uh, with a digi digital caliper. So took into account uh, also uh, as accurate as possible the dimensions of each coupon. Um, on the right, you see uh, the comparison between the test results and the uh, simulation. Um, so I should explain which signal is which. So the blue and uh, green lines are um, uh, the outputs from uh, the strain gauges. Because on the horizontal axis is compressive strain from the strain gauge. On the vertical axis, you have uh, compressive stress, nominal, nominal stress. And the black line is the average of the two strain gauges. After a certain point, the coupon fails, but also the strain gauge and get a, the, the signals go diverging, and the strain gauge is also broken. So the black line is the average of the two strain gauges, <coughs> the back to back strain gauges. And then you see uh, if I compare the Digimon uh, results, uh, the stiffness is very accurate, like uh, 3% on the predicted, very nice. The compressive strength is like a 30% difference, so a bit underestimated, but on, all in all, it's, uh, yeah, it's quite good, I think. Room for improvement, always, of course, but not unsatisfying. Um, okay, on the left, you see a picture, a video of the system test. Hopefully, oh, this starts. Oh. No. Okay. Don't get, I don't know if I put it out. <laughs> yeah, okay. Thanks.
it's moving. Okay, we have to wait a couple of seconds, but um, in uh, the physical test of reality, uh, 90 degrees rotated, but uh, the top plate of the bench compressed the component. You see it there. And um, yeah, there's all kinds of things happening, uh, like fiber crushing, matrix is failing compression, shear damage, uh, delaminations all together. So it's quite a uh, explosion. Um, but with Digimat, you can also uh, look into each ply, what is the damage, what kind of damage it is, uh, and write a picture of the uh, ply, is you the ply somewhere near the middle of the coupon. And you can look at the uh, impressive strength versus the non strain. Some example of the next slide. This is a coupon with fiber waveness, same uh, orientation cut from the plate. Also, the dimensions are from uh, real measurements of the coupon. Um, now I have to take into account, uh, besides the layup, also uh, the amplitude of the outer plane fiber waveness. So I took that from one of the specimens that I cut from the plate, uh, measured the maximum amplitude and wavelength, and put that in the, um, in the Digimat, and used a sort of uniform uh, decreeing amplitudes towards the bottom of the of the coupon. There are more out of plane waveness. You also have user defined uh, waveness definitions I didn't use yet. <coughs> right to see uh, test versus. Uh, Simulation. Also, here, uh, stiffness quite uh, well predicted. Some under prediction of the compressive strength, but also quite good. And here you see on the left the physical tests. Starts moving, and this coupon was also the strain on the side of the coupon was measured. So you see when it bends in a, on a lower uh, surface, there's compression. And on the right, you see one of the simulations in uh, Digimat with the waveness taken into account. And uh, the area of the damage is quite well predicted. This variable is the, the shear damage, and also matrix damage has the same kind of. Uh, Damage pattern and also the uh, eliminations and fiber damage is uh, occurring. Next slide, some conclusions. Um, well, uh, I can predict quite well the compressive strength and stiffness uh, with fiber waveness. Yeah, also, uh, a large reduction in stiffness and strength uh, compared to the coupons without um, waveness. So that's quite nice. Um, and also, I didn't need a, a lot of uh, physical testing to determine ply properties, so that's quite nice uh, of the uh, Digimon software. You have, uh, if you're lucky, you have the qualification data already uh, available. So that's a strong point, I think. A recommendation for future, um, maybe some more sensitivity studies uh, to see if I can improve the pressure strength. Um, and maybe also use the advanced progressive failure uh, model. I, did. I just started to check if, what the difference are. I have to work a bit more on it uh, and see how to use it. There are differences, so I can tell you that. Um, also, yeah, I simulated some more coupons. From each test series, I only simulated one coupon, but yeah, I think I should check more coupons if it's still that predictive or not. And um, maybe if I do something in the future on a uh, similar project, um, use, for example, CT data and uh, determine the waveness from that. Now I did, yeah, uh, did it from a uh, sample cut uh, besides the coupon. But the actual coupon, the waveness can be a bit different. Uh, so, yeah. Okay, that's the end of my presentation. Thank you for your attention.